You needed the pastor when you were jobless. Prayed you into a job. Prayed you through the circumstances of your life. And suddenly you are now successful. Now you have reason to believe that religion is the opium of the poor. Is the fantasy of those that have nothing to do. But when you had nothing working for you, it was part of your funds. It was part of your commitment. You would show up at church and, and regardless of what happened, you would show up at church. But the, the, the apex, the apex has revealed your character. When we talk about the apex, what are we talking about? I was looking at the dictionary to try and find out what this word really does mean. And I discovered that according to the Oxford Dictionary, it says that the apex is the top of the highest part of something. It is the top of the highest part of something that's what the apex means it means it means especially a forming point a point from which visibility has been achieved and influence has been attained in the apex uh, Joyce Wesley suggests that this is the it is the realm from which people are getting to know who you are that you have become a celebrity it is because you are in the apex of your life I also went to find out again in the many uh, dictionary and I found out that also the word Apex means the highest point of achievement. The highest point of achievement. You have made it. You are the guy, Bazoo. <laughs> Where in the old Bazenga? You have made it. There is no argument about your success. You are, you are doing well. When your car passes, we know it is you. It is the apex of your life. You have risen through the ranks of your company, you know. You got in there maybe as a tea girl and you have risen and risen and gone up through the ranks. Now you have things like disturbance allowance. Uh -huh. You now have things like fuel allowance. You now have things like house allowance. You don't even rent a house, but you have a house allowance. They will pay you for building your house and living in it. You are at the apex. At the top of your apex. You are at the highest point of your achievement. And I have discovered suddenly, if I don't this we are going to lose a lot of people whom we prayed for to get up and when they got up they lost the essence from which they went up cheating on your family requires a certain financial stability you have gotten it so you don't mind you suddenly discover you need two wives. You suddenly discover that your husband is not as strong, so you need the gym instructor at the apex. You never used to go to the gym in the valley, but now you have to go to the gym because you are at the apex. At the apex, you suddenly discover that the church is bad. But when you were in the valley, the church was great. This is a place I get comfort, a place I get to be encouraged. And I thought to myself that I need to tell the people, be careful when you get to the mountain. The brother is no longer in the valley. He's no longer fighting you in the day you have nothing to eat. He's waiting for you when you are already satisfied and, and everything is flowing for you. You are at the apex. 
money in the bank who should I be afraid of I have money in the bank my children go to international schools even if the devil was to turn against me I will never be poor I was mesmerized at some of the quotes we mentioned how arrogant we become when we are at the apex and then I found out that there was wisdom that was shared by God in the beginning before we went up he shared this wisdom so that then it can become an instruction from which we draw our wisdom so that we do not fall back into the very thing when he spoke in the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 he said to us pride goes before a fall the apex is a place of You move from a V to a V8. You have status. Now the watchman at the gate in church must open when they see you from the corner. I don't want to wait at the gate. Do you know who I am? If the picky picky's guy scratch your car a little bit, you ask them, who is your father? <laughs> Do you know what car this is? It is at the apex. Look at your life. When you didn't have the things you have now, how are you behaving? You used to value family. You would take them out. You, you wanted to have lunch with them. You wanted to sit down with them. You wanted to share with them. You shared your part of time with them. You shared your most valuable moments with your children. You were happy when your wife came and said, I'm pregnant. You were extremely happy. Now you are the apex. You discover your wife is out of weight. You now need a figure six. Mm. In the apex. When you didn't have a car, you went to the village once or two months. Now we don't see you in church because you have to take the Subaru to the weekend every weekend. Naivasha is the place you are familiar with. Your altar has shifted from Yukos to Naivasha. At the apex. At the apex. Uh, you have money. Pastor needs you. Uh, so nobody can correct you. You can uh, sleep with four, five men. And because you're not accountable to anybody, nobody can talk to you. The church needs me. Uh -huh. And I have seen the arrogance of people that have money, the arrogance of people that have gotten some little money, you will pick some girl from this church and disrespect the pastor and marry them against the instruction of the pastor and give birth to children with them and because nothing is happening to you, you continue and pick another and pick another and another and now you've got seven women around you, don't wait for cancer to hit you so strong I was wrong because pride has entered you. Pride, pride. Look at your neighbor, say pride. Pride is a disadvantage. Give seven people a high five and tell them pride is ugly. Humility looks awesome. Uh huh. Come on, tell them. Tell them pride is ugly. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Say it louder. Say it louder. Say it louder. Say pride is ugly. Now I want you to talk to your neighbor. Talk to three people and tell them when you are proud, you look very ugly. Come on, look at them. When you are proud, you look very ugly. <laughs> Did you talk to Look at the book of Proverbs, chapter number 6, verse 16. Uh -huh. Verse number 16, downwards. Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 16, downwards. The same translation of the scripture. Uh -huh. Pride is ugly. Pride repels God. Pride takes God's face off you. When you become proud, look at this. There are six things that the Lord does 
what? I can't hear you. The Lord can actually hate you. Look at your name and tell them when people hate you, you can run to God. But when God hates you, you have nowhere to run to. Preach a Bible, preach. Preach it like you feel it. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Verse number 17. He says what? How the eyes. Uh -huh. Come on somebody. How the eyes. And then what? A lion tongue. Uh -huh. Hands the shade innocent blood. Come on somebody. A heart that devices wicked schemes. Uh -huh. Feet that quick to rush into evil. Come on somebody. A false witness who pours out lies. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Come on, keep going. A son, my son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. I want you to go back and give me the King James Version. Give me the King James Version. The things that the Lord hates. There are six things that the Lord hates. There are six things that the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Come on, look at this. Then he goes to the next verse. He says what? Son, it lives in the heart. Pride lives in the heart. But then, when pride leaves your heart and shows off on your look, that pride is in another level. God says, I hate it. I hate it. And I don't care how many bodyguards you have. I hate it. I hate a proud look. And when you begin to develop pride inside of you, you don't see when your flight is going down, you actually don't land immediately. The demotion of God doesn't come instant. The demotion of God comes slowly. The doctor says you have a, a hole in the heart. That is God dealing with your pride. Uh -huh. You have a hole in your heart. We had a certain rich man in this country that was sleeping with everything. He would come across. He was sleeping with small girls, sleeping with every kind of girl. Actually, he had gotten to a place of putting machines in his office that measure whether you have HIV or not. Had so much pride, living a careless life. Until one time he's told you have cancer, then his life turned. I came to tell my church, don't wait for a doctor's report. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. If he gives you a car, use it to serve. If he gives you a job, use it to serve. If he gives you money, use it to serve. Can I preach in this house? Humble yourself. Don't wait for poverty to humble you. Humble yourself. Don't wait to go to the valley to humble you. Humble yourself. You can have 40 million in the bank and still come for prayer.
the battle moved from bread because you need to fight to have bread in the valley. But on top of the hill, it's about your worship. Mm. Oh. Who will you worship mm. after you get married? Who will you worship after your business speaks? Yeah. After your church grows? Yeah. Who will you worship? In the valley, the battle was about bread. On the apex, the battle was about worship. Yes. Tithing is not a low thing. It's a worship thing. Yes. Yes. Abraham did not tithe to Melchizedek as a law. There was no law of Melchizedek. He tithed as an act of worship. Mm. Gratitude to God. But on the hill at the apex he's after your worship. And you cannot be proud and worship at the same time. Yeah, I say it. Yes, I have said it right on your faces. You cannot be proud and worship at the same time. 